In this video, I'm going to talk about building a more sustainable community for all. So the first question we're going to think about is why sustainability? And I, I like to think of this as an organizing concept and a guiding principle. Uh, it helps to have a guiding principle to help with planning and development. And sustainability offers a balanced framework and that can guide a more balanced form of development or planning. And that's more appropriate in many cases than the more common yet narrower pure economic uh, paradigm or view that's used uh, to think about development and planning issues. So with sustainability, uh, largely it got its roots from this thing called the Brundtland Report, which came out in the early 1990s uh, from the United Nations Environmental Program uh, at the, the World Conference that was going on. And it's from that meeting that we got the idea of uh, not sacrificing needs of the present generation uh, and so forth, right? Uh, and future generations to meet their own needs. You know, these kind of long-term view of development is not common. In fact, you know, the economic paradigm we were talking about tends to be pretty short-sighted, and that's one of the problems with it, is it doesn't think down the road. And in many cases, you know, if we're, we're careful in terms of how we develop, uh, while well, we're talking about communities or entire countries even, uh, if we develop wisely and carefully, then we can ensure sustainable economic development only in relation to uh, other considerations. And that's where we get the other kind of notion of sustainability as a balancing act between the economy, the environment, and society. And, you know, it's somewhere in the middle there we find the right balance. Or another twist on that is what Edwards calls the three E's. That includes the economy, equity, which really replaces society. And the third is the environment, of course. Uh, so this looks a lot like those three circles. Uh, but the equity aspect shines a light on a particular part of society. And here that means we're building in notions of social justice into sustainability itself. And then he actually offers a fourth E, which has to do with education, uh, kind of encouraging people to think about sustainability in a broader sense. So what do we mean by community? Uh, we started off saying we want to build a more sustainable community. So what do we mean by that term? And uh, we can turn to our textbook on environmental sociology by Bell and Ashwood and see that we're talking about community in the broadest sense, and that means not just people, but non-human animals and the non-living community as well. Uh, so human society in this perspective is embedded in the biophysical environment and uh, you know not separate and not independent of it but mutually interdependent so environmental sociology examines how changes in society are going to result in simultaneous changes in the biophysical environment and vice versa and you know all along also thinking about the economy so what it means uh, we're connected to the land to each other to wildlife to the non-living world, uh, everything is connected, and that's really an ecological framework we're using. And social change, environmental change, and economic change are viewed as happening always in tandem. And these one change in one part leads to shifts and changes in all of the parts, again, using sort of an ecological framework. So let's take a community focus on sustainability. And here we have to ask, so why take a community focus? And I like what Wilkinson says about community. He says that individuals and society uh, both want to strive towards sustainability, but individuals can only do so much, and society is really just an abstraction. So it's only in our, our everyday lives, uh, where, we live, we've, where we live out our lives in our community, that we can make the most change. So he says you know, in his quote, part of the importance of community is its role as the setting and mechanism of empirical contact between the individual and society. This is a crucial role because immediate social experience is necessary to social well-being. And this is true because society is an abstraction. One can experience only indirectly or symbolically. And that's why we often kind of tease people when they say, well, I'm going to save the world or I'm going to save, I'm going to fix society, because that just sounds so daunting and, and impractical. And in fact, if you accept this view that society is an abstraction, then it's in fact an impossibility. But what you can do is you can change your local community by getting involved and, and making particular contributions. 
So, just to kind of recap then, society is too big and hard to reach, in fact, just an abstraction, and individuals acting alone can only do so much. So it's community as a go-between. Uh, it's not outside the sphere of our influence. We can create widespread changes that ripple throughout the community system. Uh, we can help kind of uh, provide a counter voice maybe to special interests or other types of groups. And, you know, we can help the community practice what's called some collective agency, which is working togetherness. Uh, so <clears throat> we also need to think about development and well-being and not just development for the sake of development. And a lot of times that's what it is, right? It seems like we're just chasing economic development for the sake of more economic development without really thinking about what the impact of that economic development is. And ultimately, we're trying to build a higher quality of life. And... For that reason, I think it's useful to turn to this notion of what's called the Community Capitals Framework as a, a framework of sustainable development. And ultimately, uh, it's, it's a good way to take uh, stock of what needs to be fixed and what, what's going well and give us some ideas of how to direct our energy uh, to be more efficient to building a broad and satisfying quality of life. So this is what that Capitals Framework looks like in it involves several capitals, all the way from the natural capital of the environment, the built capital of our infrastructure, the financial capital uh, of our, our resources, economic resources, our political capital has to do with decision making about resources, our social capital, which has to do with our social networks and ties and the resources found within them, our human capital, that has to do with our education and our health, and our cultural capital. It has to do with our values, our beliefs, and our norms. And I think, uh, this is my own creation, that a lot of these, these ideas have a sort of hierarchical component to them. Uh, rather than just looking at them as a swirl of circles, I like to look at them as a pyramid. And, uh, of course, for any community to be successful, it needs to have the possibility of life. And, in fact, there are some communities that are so badly polluted or in, uninhabitable that it's, it doesn't have enough natural capital to support a community. But even if you have that, uh, you need to have some basic level of built infrastructure to make a human community possible. Uh, and by that, we include all types of transportation networks, uh, housing, roads, communication networks, cell phone towers, everything like that. And once those pieces are in place, we need to set up good political and economic decision-making systems and processes to support life, and then ultimately build better human, social, and cultural capital within the community. And uh, that those are the major pieces of the capital's framework in a, in a slightly different form, what I think is a more hierarchical pyramid uh, shape. And that will wrap up our discussion of sustainable community. Thank you.